All right. <laughs> hey. Hey. Here with Ryan, the Hanley man, farmer in uh, Jacksonville, Oregon. How's it going today, Ryan? It's good. Thanks for having me here, Aaron. Heck yeah. Glad to be uh, talking. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? You work at um, yes. Hanley Farm, right? I work at Hanley Farm, and <clears throat> we do farm and education. We do primarily no-till, going for no irrigation practices, empowered by uh, mulch. Wow. Yeah. So what is the whole deal with the no-till? What does that mean? Got it. So no-till is made possible. So first of all, tilling is often seen as the practice of like tractors often till fields for agriculture. Sometimes we use like walk behind machines, kind of like a lawnmower but it's got a tilling implement on it and I believe that we decided to do that to well we do that in order to turn the soil over exposing the soil medium so that we can plant seeds in it and then we follow that by continually uh, <coughs> weeding around those desired plants to decrease competition, water competition, nutrient competition. And when we till the soil, there's, there's an enormous seed bank in most soils. So when you till it, you're actually just kind of like turning a blender on and just like putting all these new seeds on the so surface. So that's why everyone has to uh, follow it with weeding. Well, so you're saying with no-till, you don't weed and you don't water. So How does we, that work? so <clears throat> I believe that soil should never be exposed to the sun. And so we maintain a permanent covering of mulch. Mulch is a general term. It means, uh, it can be various uh, organic materials, everything from grass clippings. Uh, pine needles, sticks, debris, yard debris, hay and straw, all the way to wood chips. And they all just, the difference is they all break down at different speeds. And uh, wood chips break down the slowest. We chose wood chips at Hanley this year. They break down the slowest, but that allows providing uh, adequate time for them to break down timing it with the, the dry season in the summer so that'll maintain their structure to hold in moisture uh, during the dry season so we our growing season starts in the fall October November rather than in the spring like most agricultural practices we begin our season in the fall mulch the soil we follow the natural practices of the forest so when you see trees dropping their leaves in the fall that's an indicator that it's time to mulch and it's really easy you don't need a calendar all you have to do is just look <laughs> and so those those leaves drop on the ground they provide a mulch covering for the soil providing nutrients to the soil sufficient nutrients not requiring anything else and also providing a protect, protective covering, uh, prevention of soil erosion, in fact, potentially uh, reversing soil erosion, uh, decrease in nutri decreasing nutrient leaching, which is just uh, when we might add amendments on our agricultural fields, a lot of that nutrients tends to just fall away uh, because there's not that protective covering because water washes nutrients away when the soil is not protected. So we follow the natural practices by mulching in the fall. Wood chips, four inches of wood chips I put on the garden in October. I rested in the winter, the garden rested in the winter, and that provided sufficient time for the chips, for some of the chip layer, the bottom layer, closest to the soil, to start breaking down and, and create really uh, nutritious soil. 
while the top like three quarters or so is still maintaining its structure, not completely breaking down. So that come planting time and the dry season, those chips provide that protective cover from the sun, holding in moisture, and that's where we're at right now in the spring. Wow. So, so you don't have to water because it's insulated like that. Don't have to water yet because it's still <laughs> raining. Hopefully don't have to water because it's holding it in exactly. Wow. Holding the moisture in, yeah. That's super cool. How about the produce that you get from that kind of method? Can you speak maybe about, you've had experience in the farming yeah. world for a little while and farming more, I guess, conventionally organic, but conventional method and what are, so there's a main difference of not tilling, right? Yeah. Is that like, are there other like main differences you would say? And what's the difference in produce? And so this brings me to a very interesting topic <laughs> cool. that I try not to, I'm trying not to compare what I'm doing to what other people are doing. And I honestly try not to use the word no-till that much for multiple reasons. Number one, it has the word no in it. <laughs> and, then, and then also, like, most people do till. And this isn't about seeing what's right or wrong or who's doing the best. It's just, this is what I'm doing. So I know the food that I've grown in no-till practice and low irrigation mulch covering, I know it's really good for me just because I've been eating it for years and I, I can tell. High nutrient content, high water content. But it's, in my opinion, it's not too hard to see that because when you, I do all, most direct seeding. When you plant the seeds in the soil, rather than transplanting, you're training the roots deep immediately so the, the plant already is, is uh, prepared for that low irrigation condition. So it, it starts growing its roots down immediately from germination. And those roots are gonna be tapping into a substantial water supply deep in the soil and also uh, mineral trace minerals that are often not tapped into unless you have dandelions, mallow, and dock, and comfrey, mm. which are also super important to have in your garden. But, but if you train your roots deep, you're going to have high nutrient, high water content food. It's just how it is. So that's at least what I've experienced. And how that compares to other food, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think that's just not like important. You're getting good quality food. You're getting good quality food, yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. And what would you say for people who are interested in this practice? How would they do it at home? Or what are some good resources? So, it's actually very easy to do this kind of uh, growing food, this practice of growing food. <laughs> so, if you have. If you have a space to grow food at your house, community, uh, house or community, or friend's house, or if you just have access to land at all, all you need is mulch. And everyone should have mulch, bioregionally specific mulch. So if you have trees around you, you should have access to wood chips because there are tree companies that are often manicuring trees, trees, cutting down limbs, chipping them. So if you see trees around you, you probably have access to wood chips. Wood chips are very inexpensive, if not free. And because they're still kind of within the waste stream of society, so tap into that. <laughs> Before this farming practice becomes the norm. Exactly. It's kind of it. Well, it's... It's becoming more yeah, popular. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. And... Get them while you can. <laughs> yep, get the chips while you can, but... 
but then also there are so many different kinds of mulch chips are not uh, the only thing you can use and so hay and straw also just leaf debris uh, in your backyard if you mow your lawn grass clippings um, essentially you just don't want soil to be exposed to the sun so it's that's it and mulching in the fall is crucial not in the spring so mulching heavy in the fall and so that once again suppresses the grass um, so let me retract real quick so let's just say you're starting with a backyard with grass let's say that's a pretty general you know spot where someone might be setting up a garden mm -hmm. I what I would do is if you have access to newspaper or cardboard do a pretty heavy covering of maybe three uh, pieces or three mattings of cardboard or like a lot of newspaper on your garden plot first then follow that with your mulch so if it's wood chips just cover it with wood chips four inches other kinds of mulch just a, a comparable amount and so that's going to seriously suppress that grass if not eliminate that grass and not allow other seeds in the seed bank in the soil to germinate next spring so that in the spring after the winter rains where just depending on where you live but after the winter uh, that mulch medium is going to be breaking down providing compost tea for the soil so then in the spring all you have to do is move the chips or the mulch layer aside getting to the soil medium if you still have residual cardboard and newspaper you can you can just you know uh, either cut through that getting to the soil planting your seeds in the soil and then dusting it with some mulch on top because the seeds can germinate through the mulch and that holds in the moisture immediately and that's it and then once they start growing uh, once they get to be about six inches or so, or just from your observation, they seem strong. Then you just tuck them in with the mulch, and then you watch the plants grow, and then you pick the food. <laughs> awesome. So. Sweet. Yep. Are there any other things you'd like to mention? Maybe give us a few reasons why you're passionate about farming, but also like yeah. where you can find family. Yeah. Touch. Um, so, my mission is to empower the public to maintain their health in the simplest way by growing food. And I think that the simplest way to maintain health is by growing food with this method. I think that, um, I think that a true, the true food movement occurs when we learn that we have the right to grow our own food and I believe it's a knowledge that we have always had and we've lost to a degree but we're regenerating it and we're realizing it's exciting to grow our own food and we feel good about it and so I think everyone has that right to be able to grow their own food and eat food that they've grown in community with others as well and so that's why I'm doing this I'm not doing this once again to compare to other different ways of growing food because there's so many different ways this is just a simple way that <laughs> an average person can do mm -hmm. and that's it cool. and you can follow our Facebook Hanley Farm on Facebook and uh, yeah Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs>